So we're gonna keep it pretty simple where difficulty level one, all mm -hmm. we're focusing on is labeling each reaction as SN1 or SN2. Mm -hmm. If we were looking at this one, mm -hmm. what do you think it would be? How can we tell I from this? Let's say this is SN2. Why? Um, well, I'm looking at the nucleophile. Good. It's a strong nucleophile. Perfect, I'm gonna stop you right there. You did that perfectly. So you said, okay, I'm gonna label this and I'm gonna see that this is strong. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I have a strong nucleophile. And then from there, another thing that we could look at is looking at the alkyl halide mm -hmm. that we started off with. What kind is it? How would we classify that as? Secondary. Good. So that's another thing. Mm -hmm. I can look at it and see, well, I know that this is secondary. Those are two things that are gonna tell me what type of reaction it is. Mm -hmm. And you're completely right. I know that when I do have something that has a strong nucleophile and it can work with a secondary mm -hmm. alkyl halide, that is gonna be SN2. Mm -hmm. Versus SN1, we would have really spotted it from the yeah. nucleophile. This isn't weak, it's strong, so yep, SN2. Perfect. Nice. Off to a good start. Good, good. Let's keep going. Go for it, what do we think? All right, so I'm looking at it. It's got a charge, so I know it's a strong nucleophile. Good. Um, and then I look at this, and this alkyl halide mm -hmm. is primary, so I know it, it will have to be, once again, SN2. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no trick here. I know that this is SN2 because, yep, this is primary. I know this is a strong nucleophile. That checks out. That's it. Yay. What about this one? Okay, so I have an alcohol, which is neutral. Okay. Um, and then on this guy right here it is secondary. Well, really, I guess the indicator would be the nucleophile because it's neutral, it'd have to be SN1. This is a secondary, which works for both SN1 and SN2. It does. How else can we classify that alkyl halide as? Um, allylic. Good. So it is secondary and it's also allylic, which makes it even faster when it is allylic. That's true. So, okay, you're right. It's SN1 because this is neutral. This still works with something that's secondary and mm -hmm. especially works with something that's allylic. Yeah, Good. okay. All right, now let's look at this one. This is a solvent, right, DMF? It is, Okay. it is. Which will be an SN2 solvent, I guess. That's kind of the biggest thing I'm looking at, but I guess I can look at this up here, which would have a charge. Good. Which would make it strong. Perfect, that's strong. I'm gonna go back to the solvent. Mm -hmm. What type is it? Is it protic, aprotic? It is a protic. Good. We also knew that because it does work with an SN2 reaction mm -hmm. because we saw that this was strong. Mm -hmm. So, yep, that's good. A protic. Could have also seen that with going back to our examples. Mm -hmm. It's DMF. Yep, I have DMF that works with SN2 reactions versus our protic solvents are something like water, alcohol, an amine, carboxylic acid. Those are the common ones. Mm -hmm. But good. Yay. And then also, we could have looked at the alkyl halide. Mm -hmm. How would you classify that as? That one would be secondary. Perfect. So, label it. SN2. Beautiful. I'm also going to mention one thing. We could have noticed because we are given the oh. product, there's inversion. There's only one product here mm -hmm. because this is SN2, right? That yeah. backside attack. Now, we're going to see in a second something Reversal. else oh, okay. <laughs> with stereochemistry. <laughs> Isn't it called the racemization? Yes. Okay, okay. Yes, that's what I should remember. Good. Retention and inversion, right? Yes, good. Okay. Good, good. So I'll bring this one. It's exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Where we have two products now. Yes. What do we think this is? This one will be SN1. Good. Keep saying, telling me why. Um, so there's an alcohol, which will get neutral, good. which will be better in an aprotic, so like, you know, SN1 reaction, I guess. Protic? Um, protic, yes, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then right here we have, you know, a chiral center, but we have two, like, different bonds. Like, we have a wedge, and then we have a dash at switch, giving mm -hmm. us two reactions. Does Good. What That's did we say that you know. that was with stereochemistry? Uh, racemization. Good. <laughs> so, and that was when we have retention, just meaning that our first product will keep the same bond. Mm -hmm. So, really the same configuration, RRS. And then inversion completely Switch. change it, yeah. and that's where we see here. Another thing is the fact that, how would we label this alkyl halide? Oh, like what we categorize it? Yes, classify it. It would be a tertiary. Good. Oh, 
Mm-hmm. And yeah. that only, only works, works in SN1 with too. SN1. That's, That's another true. one that we could have seen, okay, that had to have been SN1, mm-hmm. SN2, That's that doesn't work. Okay, that's true. That's true. There's a lot of reasons that yeah. we can kind of pinpoint what it is. Okay, that's good. A lot of support. We're going to move on to this next question. Mm-hmm. So it's still difficulty level one. This time we're going to label each reaction as E1 or E2. Okay. So let's do the same thing. What are you thinking? Um, and this one, I want to say it's E2. Why? Because, once again, strong base. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they both have, like, tertiary or secondary that, like, would work for either. But I think that's, like, the biggest one that I can think of. That is. And then, yes, you're right. The fact that this is secondary, Uh go ahead and label what you think it is. E2. The main reason, yep, is because that is a strong base. That's really it. I know that for E2 and E1, Mm -hmm. it's really the same sort of substrates that we're going to have. Main difference is going to be the strong base and weak base. Plus, we could have noticed the type of solvent Solvent. that we had. That would have been a protic. Mm, That's true. But off to a good start. What about this one? NH3 with heat, it'd be E1. Why? Or is that a guess? I feel like I feel confident on it. Okay. Um, but I just, this right here is kind of throwing me off, but I guess I'm more looking at this. I don't know, actually. Is it not E1? So looking at this, it's not going to necessarily save you, right? Because uh-uh. E1, E2 both have tertiary, tertiary preferred, and preferred yeah. tertiary, right? And secondary, this is classified as what? That one would be um, secondary. Well, actually, no, tertiary because be tertiary. that's the wedge. Good. So I'll classify that. Does that part really matter? Mm-mm. No. Not like too helpful. It's not going to help you. Yeah. It's not going to save you, at least with E1 and E2. Yeah. With all of them, yes, uh-huh. that's helpful. The main thing, again, is looking at the base. Does this have a charge? That one, no. No. Okay, no. that's that's one thing. Next, does this have any, like, Na, lithium, potassium? No. That's our, our uh, spectator ions, right? Yes, And yes. then that would tell us there is a there charge. Is tra- yeah. So the fact that that doesn't have anything, this is oh, going to be weak. weak. Okay, that's why. So yeah. it would be E1 because it's weak. Yes, and okay. this goes way back to Gen Chem uh-huh. where this was a weak base. That's right. So yeah, a while yeah, ago, I know. Now. But it back. comes a little bit, it sneaks in there. <laughs> yeah, but this would have been a weak base. <gasps> okay, that's right, that's right. Something else that you haven't necessarily seen with your textbook, uh-huh. but maybe the ACS will throw in, yeah. is heat. Whenever we do see heat, we're going to have some sort of elimination reaction. It's oh. preferred. The main reason why heat is involved here is just to speed up the reaction. Oh, okay. Yeah, but just kind of throwing something new at you here. Okay, that's Because I know you're not familiar with this one, mm-hmm. but that's kind of like the checklist that you go down. Like, okay, I don't really know what this is. I didn't memorize that that was yeah. the type, right? Uh-huh. Or I'm not familiar with it. But does this have a charge? No. Does it have a spectator ion like sodium, lithium, or right. potassium? No. Yeah. Okay, it's weak. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And he, you said elimination, both E1 and yes. E2? Yes. Okay. That would have been Good. an educated guess if you were to do that <laughs> on an exam. <laughs> Let's do this one. Ooh, okay. We've got bulky base. Good. It's E2, right? Good. That's right. What's another reason why, like, besides it being a bulky base, how else could we have noticed from the base? Um, From the base. Like, but... is it strong or is it weak? Oh, strong. Strong. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's all. That's all I'm looking for. So, in this case, the bulky base is really just mm-hmm. saying this is bulky, this portion. Yeah. But this is telling me, oh, there is a negative charge there, yes, right? Yes. So this is going to be strong. strong. That's why it's E2. Perfect. And then, yes, you are correct. This would have been Hoffman's product, yes. or anti mm-hmm. And it's the less substituted alkene that is the major product. That's true. Good. Let's increase the difficulty level now. <laughs> Moving on to the next one. Okay. This says, label each reaction as SN1, SN2, E1, or E2. Mm-hmm. Some reactions, of course, can have multiple answers. Then predict the product for each reaction. Okay. Let's start here. Let's just identify what it is. This would be 